Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. I'm not a philosopher. I'm going to go from, at this from a much more um, low-level perspective. We're just building some prototypes right now that are interesting in the space. Um, so I'm going to talk about tagging on the desktop. And um, I work in the social community group with uh, Lily Chang. And um, we're going to talk about some of the, how do, we, how do we solve some of those fundamental problems? How do we get people to start tagging? What's the immediate payoff for tagging before we even get into the social implications? I'm going to do a couple slides, then I'm going to do a demo. And then if we have more time, I'll do either more slides or more demo. OK, so I'm going to talk about this prototype called Tesla, which is basically, it's, um, you can look at it um, as a new desktop. Um, and um, one of the things we're using tagging for in this desktop is to get rid of folders entirely. And there's two reasons we want to get rid of folders. Um, I'll qualify that in a minute. Um, there's two, two problems with folders. One, one problem with folders is when you're looking at a folder, you're looking at a subdivision of a particular volume on a particular machine. We think that's a very particularly uninteresting concept in today's world of uh, sharing and distributed data. Uh, the other is this problem that Dave talked about, which is you can't put a single item in multiple folders. And we always want to take the same item and put it multiple places in multiple taxonomies. It's a real frustration for even non-technical users today. So tags are a way that we can give people a way to do that without confusing them about what's going on. Um, now, tagging isn't new. Um, tagging has been on the desktop since as long as there have been desktops. It's been called keywords, categories, labels, et cetera. Uh, what we are doing with this prototype that I think is new is um, is making tagging much more prominent in the user interface and giving some new mechanics on top of tagging that leverage tagging to, to enable new scenarios and simpler mechanics for end users. Um, so two of those mechanics are, um, are that we're using tagging to drive sharing. More generally, we're using actually queries to drive sharing. But um, tags are a great way to give non-technical end users a handle on queries. Um, and um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more in, more in detail about that in a minute. The other is that we're using tags to enable notification. It'll let you name a set of things that you're particularly interested in and get specialized, very specific notifications when things change in, that, are um, that have those tags. Um, so yeah, let's look at the demo. OK, this, this is very prototype code. You know, I'm my test department, so the crashes, please be kind. OK, so this is Tesla. And what we're looking at is all my content. Um, and this is a faceted search, metadata-oriented retrieval engine. Um, so I can look around. I think my, uh, my first search tends to be kind of slow here. Um, what I'm seeing is all my stuff organized by type. So there's all my emails, events, appointments, et cetera, source code, documents, video, et cetera. Now here's all my stuff organized by date, um, stuff I'm working on today. Like right here is, is the PowerPoint I'm looking at right now. Um, and then I, also I can have my stuff organized by tag. So we came to tags from a very different direction in this, in this scenario. We were looking for something that would give people the ad hoc organization power they have with folders, but wouldn't um, limit them to a particular machine. So a lot of weird things happen when you put things into a folder together. You may just want to make an a statement about arbitrary grouping. These five things go together. But when you're doing that with a folder, all those things are going to be copied or moved to the machine that, you're, that the folder lives on. You also have to go and find the folder in order to add things to it. Um, you can have multiple copies of the folders on different machines. Tags are a much more natural ad hoc organizational paradigm. Um, so here's just the tags I have. And I was talking about more prominence in the UI. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if I go and look at you know, just my favorite stuff, if you just have something selected in what, what we in Microsoft call the list view um, and start typing, we're, we're tagging is, is the first order of business here. So you see down in the corner of the window, We've got this little tag hanging off the edge of the window. It tells me that I'm tagging. It tells me what I'm tagging it with. So maybe I'm tagging this with pretty, because I was just at the Tulip Festival. Um, so I just hit Enter. Tag gets applied to that data and also gets put into my tag list over here. Um, so now th th this, is, this is a toy tag list. And we know there are issues of scalability around tags in the user interface, because people are eventually going to have hundreds of tags. Um, I'm kind of punting on that issue right now. Um, and so, so, so it's very easy to tag things. It's easy to retrieve things that are tagged. Um, and, um, and another thing we're doing, I was talking about notification and prominence in the UI. If I have a tag that's particularly interesting to me, perhaps I'm working on a collaborative project with someone else and we're using this tag to organize our common work, I can take any one of these tags, let's take Longhorn, um, and put it up on my notification bar here. Now this is like, as you'd see in a web browser, it's a quick link to get back to that set of things. So even if, if this tags panel is collapsed, I can get back to that set of things that I'm particularly interested in. But what it also gives me is a, a notification surface. Because um, remember, 
what, what we're moving towards is doing this in a distributed environment. And I'm not going to demo the distributed demo because I only have one machine here, um, but this all works distributed as well. So um, if I said I'm really interested, I want to keep an eye on this tag Longhorn up here, and I put that up in this special place in my UI, and someone comes along and tags something else with Longhorn, um, and spells it correctly, this guy signals up here. And this, this is, again, remember I talked about this is tags, but this is really enabled by a query architecture. So this is, we can do this with all kinds of arbitrary queries, things of type photo, things of type photo authored by foo with tag bar. Um, so, so the model totally extrapolates out, but you can see how, how tags really replace um, folders in this meditative-driven world. Um, and now the, the next big question is, in this world, you know, today we're very used to sharing by folders. We put a folder up on a server and tell someone where it is, or we publish a folder out from our machine, at least in the desktop world, not so much in the web world. Um, so, so what does it mean to share tags? So what we're doing with that, we, we think that sharing is absolutely critical to the model. You can't really talk about a new model for the desktop unless sharing is a, is a built-in part of it. So the, the semantics we have around sharing with tags and with queries in general is say I've got this, this stack of things tagged pretty and I want to share it with Lily. It's simply a matter of dragging and dropping over to her name there. But there are some questions that come up. Um, the default behavior is, is just share these items. Take the things that I've already tagged with pretty, give them to Lily, and we're done. Operation's over. Now, the second, perhaps the more natural option, is to create a feed. And so this basically says, take anything that's tagged with pretty, share it with Lily now, and then anything I tag tomorrow with pretty, also share that out. So basically, it creates a dynamic set and sort of a dynamic syntax that's created by the user for sharing items between machines. And then there's an idiom on top of this, um, which, which came obvious once we had implemented the first, which is I may be sharing all the stuff tagged with pretty with Lily, but there's no guarantee that she's sharing the same stuff back with me. So we create an idiom on top of that, which is a, a, we call a two-way feed. What that's going to do is share out all the things that, match this, that have this tag, and then it's also going to pop up UI on her end of, of the connection, asking her to share the same query back with me. And this is the way that I can create a collaborative space around a tag, but I don't have to talk about server architecture. So I don't have to go up to Delicious and open an account there. I don't have to do it on Flickr. I don't have to do it on a Windows server. I don't really care whether there's a server behind this or not. But this is a, operating at a higher level, level of abstraction that you can imagine how servers would plug transparently into this. Perhaps if we have access to a common server, the system has enough information to, to know that it's a good idea to put the information up on that server. OK, so um, let's go back and look at some more slides. So you can see, now we started from desktop and just organization, what makes sense there. And tags, really, when they dropped into this model, just solved a lot of problems for us in a really elegant way. So even if you never go into the social implications of sharing and, uh, and tagging on, online, um, I think this model is great and compelling. But there, there are things that are very different from the in the desktop from the web. So the, in the web, you have sort of this inherently public space where, you know, I, I have a delicious account. You can go and look at it, Matt, Mac. I use it all the time. I think it's a great model. It works really well. But it is stuff that, I'm not, that isn't too sensitive. I'm not putting my taxes there. I'm not using it to share, you know, love letters. Um, I'm just using it, you know, to find sort of interesting public things. So it's a great model for public stuff. Desktop is a totally different formula. On the desktop, all my stuff is assumed private. I don't want stuff leaking out just because I've tagged it unless I've physically ask for that to happen. And so that kind of blocks this serendipitous thing that happens on Delicious and Flickr today, where you can find people who are interested in the same things as you and, and, and connect with people or connect with content uh, just accidentally. Um, and then there's these other very you know, specific but interesting issues that we run into on the desktop, like where, is, where does the tag live? If I tag something then send it to you, does that tag go with it? Um, and um, do, you know, because I might tag a, a photo with what a jerk or, you know, you know, offensive or sensitive tags. And so there's a big issue of whether these tags go flying around with the documents as I share them out. Um, so you kind of can go in a direction where we say we're going to have, we're going to have some sort of, you know, elaborate tag security UI where I can set ACLs on different tags. Right now that's not our approach. Um, our approach is, is that um, the tags are just built in. We think basically our, we're, we're, we're erring on the side of power. Give people a lot of power to let the tags just fly around and hopefully recapture some of the serendipitous um, community organization. Um, and uh, we're probably going to have to revisit that and come back and, and, and let people at least give, give us two bins and say, these tags never travel, these tags, I don't care. Um, so some of the stuff that this really is, is now giving us a foundation to look more deeply into is, um, is tagging is one thing when you're doing it on the web in a, pa in a space where people are not putting up a rich profile of their stuff. You're not necessarily doing full indexing of all the documents. When you're doing it on the desktop and you have a pretty powerful CPU just sitting around has your tags and has full text indexes of all your documents, and also is then watching your social behavior on top of these tags. So within a small work group, I don't know if you noticed, but in, in, the, uh, 
In the prototype here, we've got sort of a buddy list model. These are people I work with a lot and I share with a lot. So suddenly we're, we have one store where we're capturing social transactions, we're capturing tags, we're capturing rich content indexing of all the documents, and then all this other metadata about authoring and mod dates and stuff like that. So we think this is a really great fertile base for doing um, some stuff with machine learning to start to identify um, emergent vocabularies within work groups because you start to notice that certain words are used between certain people about certain things and, 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 and you have a very rich model of what those things are. So, we, so th this model, that I, the prototype that I show you here is very mechanistic. You know, it's basically only doing what you tell it. But the direction we're going into is, is basically a suggested bin, where whatever you're doing in whatever context you're looking at and whatever you're touching, we're going to start to make suggestions based on who else might like to see it, who else might have more information and stuff like that. And then we also see an opportunity to tie back into, now we know that, you know, the overthrow of formal ontology is nigh, but um, there still is a real lot of really nice work, particularly if you look into bioinformatics and stuff with really, really rich online formal ontologies that a lot of people work with on a daily basis. And um, I think a lot of the problem, like if you look at, um, at Yahoo's gigantic index of the world, you know, and their, their huge tree of taxonomy for all the web pages, um, that's just a hard UI to deal with. It doesn't mean I'm not interested in the information about that taxonomy. It means I just don't necessarily want to browse it to get to a particular document. But if my system can watch the tags that I'm using and learn about the documents that I'm interested in and therefore the subjects that I'm interested in who I share with, it can start to recommend pieces of this ontology to me. Like, I've noticed that you seem to be a genetic engineer and we're going to make this ontology available to your store and just map it into your UI for you. Three minutes? Okay. Last slide. Um, so so some, some bigger problems that this really pushes on for us is what is, what is the real sharing model in the world today? Um, um, we, we know we can do P2P transfer. I can give a person a single file. That's kind of a pain in the butt to do today. Um, client server is sort of the model that's been driving enterprise scenarios for a long time. RSS, you can kind of look at as a sharing model, except it's, it's, it's very one way. Um, and email is clearly the one to beat. Email completely dominates all collaborative technology today. So I, I think um, we, we look a lot at what email offers people in terms of modeling social transactions and, and giving you a version record of documents as, as sort of an ideal sharing model that we want to implement in this, in this UI. And then finally, distributed storage. Now, in this UI, it's very simplified. When you give something to someone, you just tell it what you want to give and the person you want to give it to. How it gets there can be by server, by email, by online repository, et cetera. And so as people start using these kind of models to share stuff that may be very personal to them, we're going to have to really look at some of these, at these, these user, user scenarios that are growing up around services like Flickr, and, um, Flickr in particular, where you're not necessarily owning your tags, and, and there becomes a question as we, as we use more sensitive information, who owns that organization and who owns all that content that's online? So um, a way that respects uh, people's privacy and need for security, but also gives you the advantage of these online storage services is really interesting going forward. Okay, that's the end of my talk. Um, is there any questions? Yeah. The word feed. Feed. Not, not too descriptive. I'm just wondering if you thought of, if you think of it in other terms. Yeah, yeah. We really um, kind of agonized around that one. Um, and feed, you know, I'm partially being sort of, you know, trendy and opportunistic that people at least understand, oh, a feed is kind of a dynamic set of things that are coming towards me. Um, we tried, um, what were some of the other things? We tried using the word syndication. If you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Um, but feed was the, the one that was sort of concise and carried the most appropriate baggage. For, like, so when you get to the two-way feed? Yeah. That's wacky, yeah. Stream? Stream? Yeah, programmer. Um. <laughs> that, that, needs a new, that needs a new term. It sure does, yeah. 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 Yeah, um, yeah two-way feed is definitely, you're getting pretty weird there. But, but um, it was funny because we, we were going through a sequence of internal demos. And, you know, sort of one day I had, um, uh, I forget what the language I was using, but when I popped in feed, a lot more people picked it up a lot more quickly. Yeah. I was wondering, did you do any kind of user testing of uh, talking to users in, in respect to suggested tags or suggested categorization? Because I wonder how far you can suggest something for people like. Because, like, in, in Windows, when I have paper clips saying, it seems that you're doing this and that, I just switch it off. So right, right. Hate that. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know, Lou, if you want to say anything about the Sapphire stuff, because um, I haven't used ability tested any of the, suggest of the auto suggestions yet. But I think doing it in a much low, less, um, I mean, certainly Clippy burning, you know, a 256 pixel block of my screen is just something I'm not willing to live with. But if there's something, you know, a small set of, you know, five documents that often happens to have one I'm interested in, I think I would live with that personally, but that's pretty anecdotal. Yeah, I would just say, you know, I was wondering if 
especially in the issue of suggestive categories based on whatever is history. Because well, I wonder how close yeah. you can be to probably more There, there is one piece of this that we have usability tested extensively, which is browsing by metadata. We know is a clear win. Um, and, and actually what pushed us into tagging is that, um, <coughs> is that when you're browsing by metadata, you sort of get out of the space of folders and people needed a way to author their organization. And so tags are the way that, so, so we know that metadata wins. We know that the browsing sort of by stacking and drilling in really works well. And tagging gives us a way to integrate ad hoc organization with that. Right. Well, I do have tags with side effects now and sharing, and um, so the question is, how far do we want to take it? And actually, we we, we get in, into an even more abstract model, sort of these reversible queries. For example, I've got this this panel up here of things that are that are that are done by type. Um, so you know, pictures, etc. Um, if I drag you know a spreadsheet onto the picture type, am I really trying to ask my computer to convert it to a picture for me? So there are a lot of these sort of natural little scenarios that we can use for for um, for that sort of thing, but how to do it generally becomes problematic. Okay, I'm done.